I mean, even if you agree with the policy, it's a bit of a mess, isn't it? Well, I mean, I think it was you know, disappointing. I think a lot of us who support the policy were looking forward to yesterday being the first flight. Um, I think only if it had been a small number. I think symbolically, actually, it would have been, it, it would have been quite important. So um, it's disappointing. I'm not going to pretend it, it, you know, it's anything other than disappointing. Having said that, when the policy was announced in April, I think we all thought it was going to be pretty attritional. We all thought it's been lots of ups and downs. But I would say, I've just been seeing the Home Secretary's statement in Parliament. She's incredibly determined. And I continue to believe that one way or another, we will eventually be successful with this. You know, the European Court of uh, Human Rights haven't struck the whole thing down. It's a temporary injunction. Um, time will tell. Time will tell. Uh, you know whether or not um, you know w w what this means for our relationship with you. Do you, do you, right. do you agree with your colleague Michael Fabrican earlier that you yeah. know, the UK should not, though, be considered withdrawing from the European Court of Human Rights? I'm of the view uh, that I struggle to really. I would struggle to support a situation where we are a signatory of a any kind of you know, convention that ultimately you know, prevents us from being able to control our borders. You know, if you want to be a sovereign country, controlling your borders, borders is pretty fundamental. Uh, so if you got to a point where, where you, you know, it was very clear that the European Co um, Court of Human Rights was the key stumbling block that was preventing us from de delivering the Miranda policy and therefore taking control of our borders, then at, at that stage I think all options should be at the table. However, time will tell, I suspect, that it, it is possible that we can find a way of making this Miranda policy work while still being in the ECHR. I might be wrong, and, and if that is the case, everything should be on the table. In saying that, what we can understand is, you know, this may well not act as deterrent. That seems to be the only reason for it. And one of the kind of reasons that people do put forward for this policy, why it's necessary, is the cost. The mm. cost that this causes taxpayers, millions of pounds every single day. That's down to our bureaucracy, isn't it? It's down to the very fact that we don't make decisions quickly enough. Surely that should be the number one priority. I, I think in terms of the cost, of course we know with the, the uh, Rwanda scheme there is an upfront cost. The hope though, that, that when we do start seeing those planes going, which I'm confident we will, then hopefully it will begin to start acting as a deterrent. So the cost will not be never ending. What, what could actually be never ending and escalating is the status quo, where we have tens of thousands of people every year arriving on our shores illegally and staying here. The cost of that, in terms of hotels, accommodation, but well, also what, what pressure, we, what we do, but also pressure on public services. What we could services. do is process their claims better, and those that are allowed to say, give them a job, because there's record numbers of job vacancies in this country, and make them economically productive. Ultimately, though, if you're, if the message goes out, but. It, um, that if, you're, if, you do, if you find a way of getting here, you pay your people smuggling, you get yourself here, you're able to pay the money, you get here, you attempt that dangerous route, and once you're here, you're here and you can stay here, that sends out the wrong message for me. And that's the whole point of the Rwanda policy, is it sends out a message when it starts working, hopefully, that do not try and uh, attempt to enter our country illegally because you will not be able to stay here. Uh, and, and that is the kind of message that will go out if this scheme is successful. Uh, the question is, what, what if it's not, though? What if this doesn't act as a terrorist? I mean, is it, isn't in the end the governments yeah. all across the world, particularly in Western Europe, are trying time and time again to try and stem the flow mm. of asylum seekers and migrants? It, it is impossible to stop. If this doesn't work, what next? Well, you know, we know, and people talk about the Australian example, and, and lots of people from the left sort of think, oh, it wasn't successful. Well, by and large, it was successful. You know, Australia had a, a significant problem, similar to ours right now. They started um, a, a, you know, a, a, a scheme of uh, offshore processing, which isn't quite what this is, but that's what they did in Australia. And now they do not have a problem with illegal immigration the way they had back then. So, you know, yes, I think this will be successful. And I think it will act as a deterrent. Um, you know, and I think if there's a reasonable chance that you're going to end up in Rwanda, I think the majority of the people who are currently attempting this dangerous route won't attempt it. And just very finally, you know, you're someone who supported Brexit, believe in Global Britain. I mean, irrespective, again, whether you believe the policy or mm. not, do, do you think there is a, a bit of an international kind of damaging reputation for Britain abroad that sends out a message we're not particularly welcoming or, or compassionate? Uh, is that a risk to, to this policy? You know, our, our record, our, our, our record, you know, when it, when it comes to accepting you know, refugees from Ukraine and, and Afghanistan, I think is, is actually pretty impressive when you look at the total, total numbers. Because I think it's pretty impressive the role we're showing in supporting Ukraine. Uh, we, you know, we are one of the leading countries in supporting Ukraine at the moment. So there's lots of different ways in which I'm very proud to be British at the moment. And I think we have a very good reputation at the global level. But right, we've got to uh, control our borders. Okay. And, and the status quo is not sustainable. OK, Tom, as always, thank you very much indeed. Tom Hunt there joining us outside Parliament, Conservative MP uh, for Ipswich. Thank you.